So let's get more reaction now. I want to bring in U.S. Ambassador to Canada, former U.S. Ambassador to Canada, Bruce Heyman. Um, hi, Ambassador Heyman. Good to have you on the show. There's so much there. But, you know, Joy brought up something that was quite interesting about his opponents in this race for the nomination, saying they don't want to criticize them, him because they want to keep that MAGA base. So what kind of tone are the others who want the job, other Republicans who want the job, adopting? How are they doing oh. this? Oh, this is this is interesting. And, and look, it's going to be interesting to follow. The, the reality is they are going in the back room and they're clapping and cheering. And they, this is the greatest thing uh, for them because they want the job and they need to knock Donald Trump out. Uh, the reality is that the Republicans also know the more he's impacted by these types of events, and these types of events are new each and every time. State charges, federal charges, now 71 charges against him between state and federal, and we still have Georgia yet, and we still have January 6th yet. He will have north of 100 charges against him. And, you know, to beat all of these charges against these prosecutors is, will be a daunting task for Donald Trump. The reality is they need to knock him out, but they don't want to have their fingerprints on this. So they, as they would say, those politicians doth protest too loudly about the uh, Justice Department and the Biden administration. Uh, they really, they really want him knocked out of this race, but they don't want their fingerprints on it and they want his supporters. And that's absolutely right. Well and, and, and Bruce, there's something really interesting here. I'm looking at a poll. So two-thirds of his supporters say it won't make any difference, doesn't make any difference to them, no matter how many charges that you're talking about, it doesn't make any difference to him. He's still the front-runner, and he's still very uh, popular with his base. Joyce, I think those folks would, would nominate a rock, a glass, Donald Trump, anyone. They're loyal. They're loyal to a a vision, the vision that he has perpetrated on them uh, for now since 2015, 16. And the reality is that they're going down with him, you know, all the way. They, they'll support him to the end and they'll believe every conspiracy theory that is thrown out. But we're talking about 25 or 30 percent of the Republican base. Um, the risk for the Republicans is they have 10, 12, 15 candidates and so the candidate with 20, 25 percent ends up winning the primaries and then becomes the nominee of the party, which I believe he will lose if he is the nominee of the party. And they believe it, too. Um, so they're, they're in a jam here, Joyce, that they, 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 this is going to be less. I think the Democrats are actually going to be on the sidelines here. They don't need to say too much about uh, these charges and the cases going forward because the Republicans are going to be fighting all over themselves. Uh, to try to determine the future of the Republican Party. We need a strong yeah, two-party system in America to work. We need a strong Republican Party, and we need one that isn't following Donald Trump for the betterment of our country. But it's interesting because if his opponents, you know, who, who want the nomination, are kind of being very careful in the House, uh, the House Speaker is actually defending him here, Kevin McCarthy, who told Fox News that, quote, uh, this is going to disrupt the nation because it goes to the core of equal justice for all. And this is a very dark day in America when you think about what they're trying to indict President Trump on. So the House Republicans are still on his side, if I understand correctly. Kevin McCarthy is using that voice we have to understand something. He holds on to that speakership by five votes. And those five votes happen to be extreme right MAGA Republicans that squeezed him and held him in office to the end. He can't afford to lose very many votes. And any one member of his party can call for a vote to, you know, oust him. And so he has a difficult dance to do. It is not unexpected he did what he did, even if he was biting his lip doing it. So I, I wonder about this. So the special counsel, Mr. Smith, promised a quick trial. So what are you going to be? What, and first of all, what, how quick could it be? And what are you following? What are you watching for next in this saga? Next in this saga, I'm watching Georgia. I think that's coming up. We've been, you know, we, we've been forewarned. Uh, she's telling everybody to 
not have any cases going at the early part of August. And she's, you know, notifying basically the Georgia public that there's going to be some action from her department coming up soon. And then we have January 6th, which I think is still in the works. And so before I think any trial takes place, we're going to have many more indictments. And then it's going to be a question of who goes first and how this is all all goes down. But I think slowly but surely the Republicans are going to say, this is terrible. This is a witch hunt. You know, he's been wrongly, you know, accused, but he's awfully busy now and we can't have our presidential candidate focused on all these other things. So pick me. And so I think that's what I see going on. Um, also, it's going to be fascinating because the judge, likely in the case in Florida, is a judge that Donald Trump appointed and has been accused in the past of favoring him. And so this will be fascinating to see if, in fact, she stays as the judge and how she behaves in this process for the federal trial. So, you know, a lot to watch here, um, a lot to unfold. But boy, the 49 pages today, as previously uh, mentioned by your correspondent, was it, it's, it's detailed. And if you read it and just take a moment and uh, pour your favorite libation, even if it's a cup of coffee or tea, and sit down and read that, you'll say, wow, this is intense. And um, there's, there, he is in serious trouble, very serious trouble. Yeah, what, what, what a fascinating political story. Bruce Heyman, the former U.S. ambassador to Canada, thanks so much for being there. Thanks for your comments.